Hi, I just want to share some of my experience from uh, Independent Fundamental Baptist uh, Church building. Um, what first brought me there was um, the website Jesus is Savior, and uh, a lot of you may know that. I'm not really promoting that website. There's a lot of good stuff on there, but there's also a lot of wrong things. And one of the main things that's wrong is that he teaches um, that salvation is uh, by faith without repentance. You know, he preaches the 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 no repentance gospel, which is false. The Bible clearly teaches that uh, unless you repent, you will perish. Repentance is definitely part of salvation. It is part of the save a saving faith. Um, but anyways, um, I was learning new things and everything. I was, you know, I, I wasn't really even aware of that maybe at that point. But uh, I liked, you know, how the website was, you know, against sin and it preached about hell and the blood of Jesus and all that stuff. And so I read an article where he said you need to go to Independent Fundamental Baptist Church. So I was like, okay. I did a Google search, and the closest one was uh, in Macomb, which is 20 minutes away from me, and. Uh, it was called Victory Baptist. So I decided to go there one time. And uh, it was a really small church. There was maybe only like 20 or 30 adults, you know, and, and a bunch of children. A uh, little building. Uh, they were really excited to see someone new there. Um, and I initially loved it. I mean, they had the piano, they sang old hymns. It was King James only. So I thought, you know, this is it. This is where I need to be. Um, I just want to share some some things about that. Uh, I can't drive right now. I have two DUIs, so I'm working on getting my permit, which I'll have soon. But anyways, um, it's 20 minutes away, so I ended up getting rides from the pastor's son there, or the hireling's son. I'll try to refer to him as a hireling, which his son was kind of like hireling junior. Uh, he went to a Bible college. They both did. Um, so anyways... The hireling son gave me rides, and, you know, a lot of times I tried to discuss, you know, the Bible, tried to discuss doctrine and stuff. I wanted to learn, and I wanted to see just what he believed and stuff, and kind of test him in some ways. So, um, so I'll kind of talk about those things that we discussed and stuff. I'm just going to go through a list of things that I wrote down, some major things that I thought was wrong about the experience. And then what made me leave eventually. Uh, first, uh, I have Patch the Pirate on here. Okay, they, they had age segregation at this independent fundamental Baptist church, which I am against. And the Bible does not teach age segregation, which means that they separate the children from the parents, and then they separate you know the younger children from the teens. So they, se they separate everybody into these age groups, and they teach them all differently. And basically it's just uh, fun and games for, you know, for the the children and the teens and um, you know and then Bible teaching for the adults which that's completely ridiculous that's not how it needs to be you know but these buildings called churches no matter what denomination they're all about control they're all you know they they separate the children from the parents and you know they're about destroying families and destroying lives and putting people in bondage that's what they're all about and, you know, for their kids, they had this Patch the Pirate program. And I was like, it's bad enough that they, that they, age, seg that they, 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 they um, age segregate, you know, they separate. But, but then they have this Patch the Pirate thing, and I'm like, you know, what's holy about a pirate? And I looked more into that, and I see that other people agree that, that this should not be taught to children. I mean... It's like, do you have any discernment, you know? Uh, so that was kind of like a first, like, warning. Like, you know, what's what's this pirate thing about? <laughs> uh, you know, why do they have to have some kind of program? You know, it was good that they were King James only. You know, why aren't they just, you know, teaching the Bible to the children as well? Why can't the children be with their parents? Um, they had a huge em em emphasis on tithing you know, which is not biblical. And then they also had an emphasis on a building plan. They wanted money for, to, to do renovations. You know, basically they were looking for like forty or 50000 for renovations. And, uh, I mean, they, they preached about tithing a lot. And, um, 
the hireling son who gave me rides. He talked about hi uh, tithing, you know, how it's necessary. And, you know, you have to take from the gross income and all this crap, uh, you know, lies and bondage. And, you know, one service, you know, they had this big building plan up by the pulpit, uh, by the ambo, you know, uh, on the stage. It was a big building plan poster showing how much money they had gained and how much more they needed. And one service, you know, he told he handed out paper and pen and told people to write down what they think they can afford to donate for this building plan. Uh, it's just completely ridiculous. Uh, and I remember, you know the hireling son too is talking to me about like you know how people aren't tithing and they need the money for the electricity and stuff and I was kind of like thinking well you don't really need lights you know just do it outside in the daytime or whatever you know it's you know it's really not necessary he's making it sound like it's absolutely necessary but no it's not you know um, it's a problem here um, you know this goes with all buildings called churches most of them you know they do this handshake thing in the morning and uh, it's just completely superficial. You know, they want to try to show people who just walked in, like, oh, we're a friendly, you know, fellowship, we all love each other, we're all one big family, you know, but it's all just confined inside the building. You know, any kind of communication that's outside of that is, you know, unaccepted. <laughs> you know, um, it's, it's completely ridiculous. Um, okay, some of the conversations that I had with, uh, this hireling son. Um, some people might agree, disagree with me on this and stuff. There's, uh, I don't know how it got to this conversation, but anyways, the hireling son told me that he knew a couple who lived together, and he he said they're already married in the eyes of the Lord, so he married them. And and I mean, I don't think the Bible shows anywhere that a bishop or an elder is to do marriage ceremonies or to do funeral ceremonies. That's just tradition. It's not scriptural. Um, you know, whether it's right or wrong, you know, I don't know. Um, but I think it's just pure tradition, for one. But I also think I kind of have a problem with these hirelings uh, marrying couples that are living in sin. They're living together. We know that they're fornicating. They're living in sin. And and then um, these couples will, or the, the hirelings will, will go ahead and marry them. And I, I think that's saying that, that's kind of like saying that what you're doing is okay. You know, but the hirelings will say, well, we need to get, we need to get it to where they're right with God, so we'll marry them. But I don't really agree with that. So I'll have to do another video on that or something. But anyways, what bothered me was that, more than that, is that he said that they were already married in the eyes of God. So he was basically saying that, you know, that sex or living together constitutes a marriage. And that's not right. Um, you know, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, we see that, that men had wives and they had concubines. If sex constituted a marriage, then they would all be wives. There would be no thing as concubines. So that just doesn't work. Um, so, you know, that kind of that, that, that kind of made me think, you know, this guy's kind of off. You know, and we had kind of arguments about this. I talked to him about this, and we went back and forth. And I'm like, just, I don't agree, you know. Uh, anyway, also... You know, I would talk to him about different denominations and different doctrines that they hold, false doctrines and everything. Uh, you know, we talk about baptismal regeneration and stuff. And he was really, I felt like he was really kind of unlearned in this. Like, I knew more about this because I was interested and I was studying, you know, doctrine and stuff. Um, but he actually said to me at one point, you know, he's like, I think, I think that the denomination that's closest to independent fundamental Baptists are Seventh-day Adventists, and I was like, whoa, you know, <laughs> they have, like, all kinds of problems, you know, like, they don't even believe in hell, like, a literal, you know, everlasting punishment, you know, they just believe that you're destroyed and stuff, like, this guy was, like, completely unlearned, and he went to a Bible college, and, you know, he didn't even know these things, you know, that's, that was, like, a big warning sign for me, you know, you're gonna say that Baptists are, like, uh, Seventh-day Adventists, uh, but I will say, you know, they are alike in the fact that they're, they're Protestants and they're a denomination and, you know, it's unscriptural, um, you know, and that they hold to traditions. 
uh, you know, they, they meet in buildings and they teach tithing as for the church and all these lies. I mean, they're similar in that, sure. But, um, you know, some of the doctrines, you know, Seventh-day Adventists are way out there. You know, Baptist, Baptists, you know, they mostly have, you know, a lot of good doctrine, but they still have the, the unbiblical practices and the traditions that are wrong. But anyways, you know, that was a big warning sign. Sometimes the hireling himself gave me rides, too, and uh, I had a conversation with him, and I asked him, do you think that, uh, I was talking about the mark of the beast, like, do you think Christians can take the mark or whatever, and he said, yeah, I think they can take the mark, and I was like, well, the Bible says that uh, whoever takes the mark, you know, the, the smoke of their torment will go up forever and ever, <laughs> and he's kind of like, well, when it comes to eschatology, you know, shouldn't be really dogmatic, or whatever, <laughs> something like that, it's like, no, well, what does the Bible clearly say, you know, um, that was a big problem for me, so just talking to these guys, I'm learning that, you know, they're really wrong on some things, um, I was talking about Christmas and stuff to, you know, the hireling son, and I was talking about TV or whatever, I don't watch TV, and, uh, he was like, well, I think it's okay to... Uh, you know, my children, they watch, like, Rudolph and the Christmas specials and stuff, and I don't think anything's wrong with it, you know, and, and I do, you know, it's all pagan, um, you know, there's certainly a problem with that, you know, and it's corrupting his children's minds here, and, um, and this whole family, uh, the hirelings family, they all were big sports idolaters, you know, they love sports, um, there's a problem with that, too, um, you know, they they like to control people and one sermon the hireling wanted to give this show for his sermon that his sermon was basically you know like all hirelings will teach that you need to serve the church you know you need to serve the building and uh he was talking about like having runners for the for the church like people who are going to run and you know do what needs to get done so he actually had people get up and run back and forth between the rows and stuff, and he called on me to do it. And I was stupid, you know, and I went along with it. But, you know, that it's it's a total brainwashing and control, you know. Um, like, what if I would have said no? You know, ooh, I would have been, you know, denying the hireling. I would have, you know, ooh, that would have just been bad. You know, um, it's completely ridiculous to, you know, try to try to control people. And, uh, and I've noticed lately, you know, also at point, it, it stuck out to me that hirelings, you know, they'll try to get the congregation or the audience to repeat after them and stuff, and it's all part of this brainwashing and control. Um, I asked the hireling son to soul win with me one time to go to someone's door that I knew just moved in, my neighbor, and, uh, we went there, and... It basically, it just ended up being him inviting her to the church building, you know, which, you know, that's not spreading the gospel. Um, let's see. One of the last, biggest last things that made me leave was they had a missionary there, and this missionary was very charismatic uh, in his preaching and stuff, which was fine. You know, it can be entertaining and stuff. There can be problems with it, too. But, you know, at the end of the service, he basically, he did like an altar call. And uh, I was like, this is very charismatic. And uh, next thing I know, like, the, pretty much everybody there in the building is going up to the, to the stage and kneeling down and praying before it. And I was like one of the only ones standing there in the pews. And I was like, I'm not going to go up there, you know. I just thought, this is completely ridiculous. This is just straight up charismatic. You know, um, they say that they're separate and everything, but they're just the exact same. And, you know, it doesn't, it, there's no difference between praying where you are and going up to the stage and praying. Um, and I, I was just like, I was totally disgusted at that moment. And I was like, I'm done. You know, I realized that all, all these buildings called churches are the same. No matter what denomination they are, they're all unbiblical. And I just needed to study the Bible and just, you know, learn what I need to do from doing that. And, uh, so I ended up messaging, uh, the hireling son to tell him, you know, I'm, I'm done going there. I'm just gonna do church at home. I'm just gonna study at home. So the hireling son says that, uh, 
he's like, the house churches have failed. Like, good luck with that. <laughs> it's like, well, why don't you tell the characters, you know, the people in the Bible that, that had church in their home that the house churches have failed. You know, that's really wonderful to say. And then he called me a novice, a novice. <laughs> and uh, I don't agree with that. Um, I mean, I'm pretty new in the faith, uh, you know, for about a year, but I've read through the Bible, I mean, I know a lot of the central doctrines and everything, I know a lot, I mean, I've written, you know, hundreds of verses, uh, if not thousands, you know, I've memorized verse, you know, I still have a lot to learn, for sure, but I'm not a novice, <laughs> and, you know, for him to say that, but yet he, you know, thinks that sex constitutes marriage, but yet he thinks that the Seventh-day Adventists are like Baptists in their doctrine. Uh, you know, who's the novice? I mean, whatever, you know, he was just very upset, you know, they thought they had another tither, you know, they thought, you know, I was going to get a job, and I was going to be faithful and loyal, and give them all my money and everything, and get more people to come so they can give them their money, and that's how they all work. Um, I wanted to mention, too, that there was a sermon one day where the hireling, someone bought the hireling a brand new truck, like a 50000 to to $100,000 truck, I don't know, I'm not even really a vehicle kind of person, but it was a really nice truck, and he made this whole sermon on it about how good God is and stuff that he got this truck. And it just makes me sick, you know, I hear stories of people giving these huge checks to these buildings called churches. And everybody gives them their money, they give them their money for tithing, and they give their money to missionaries. They think that they're spreading the gospel by giving the money to missionaries. They think that they can, you know, avoid having to, to spread the gospel themselves, you know. And they think that this is all uh, building up treasure in heaven, and they think that they're doing the will of the Lord. Um, but it's not. It's just all brainwashing and mind control, and it's just burning your money, and it's giving to, you know, satanic businesses. And, uh, you know, it's like, man, these people could have done so much more with this money, you know. And, and he got this brand new truck, and he's still, like, begging for money for the church and everything. And I don't know. I'm not saying that people can't buy people nice gifts and everything, but it's like, just think about what you're doing with your money. <laughs> I mean, and think about really what good you could really do with that much, you know poor people, people that need food, that are starving, people that need Bibles and everything else, you know. Um, it's just disgusting. There's so much more to say on this, but... And, you know, the hireling never really preached on sin or hell like I was hoping for. It was... You know, he did some good Bible teaching. I mean, I learned some things, but it was, it was never preaching. You know, not like I was looking for. Uh, so... I think that's it for now but yeah I got out of there so if you're going to a building called a church I hope that you'll get out of there too um, so thanks for watching God bless except ye be converted and become as little children ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven